Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Make Life Fun Podcast. I am so happy to have you back with us. Today, I have Rachel Blair on the show with us. Welcome, Rachel. Oh, thank you, Josie. I'm so excited (laughs) to be here. Tell us about yourself, Rachel. Tell us about your journey to being a mom. Tell us about your podcast that you host. Just yeah, let us into a little insight of you. Yeah. So I'm a mom of three. My kids are nine, eight, and four right now. And I used to be a nurse for like 10 years. And then when I had two children, I decided to kind of dive into being a stay-at-home mom because I just was kind of feeling pulled in different directions in terms of the nursing and the being with my children. And so I've been home with them for about seven years now and loving it. And, you know, when the pandemic hit, I ended up homeschooling them for a year and kind of going down that rabbit hole and that journey, which was great and awesome and fun. And then I just really felt called to start raising vibrant kids. I've always been interested in self-help books and doing work on myself and really knowing that I can do different things to make a difference in my life. Like I've had those different experiences throughout that have kind of given me that insight. And the pandemic really kind of showed me too, where if you lean into joy, it just really kind of elevates your life. Right. And I just want more moms to know that, like, and I want, I want us to raise our kids knowing that, you know, that we can lean into these higher vibrations of joy and love and inspiration Mm -hmm. and live at a higher level. And so, and that that's available to us. And so I've kind of just started this podcasting journey kind of like you have, and it's been really fun. It's been really great. So I don't know. That's kind of where I am right now. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you go into podcasting from being a stay at home mom? You said you were enjoying homeschooling for a year and then you were like, I'm very much into raising vibrant kids. I would love to hear that that journey from being a stay at home mom to deciding to do something for yourself. Cause I know a lot of moms sitting here listening are like, oh, this sounds like maybe what I'm thinking today. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know what it was, but when I started staying home, podcasts would give me that like outlet of intellectual stimulation Mm -hmm. that I was craving because when I was nursing, I would mean, I've always been kind of like a high, like I've loved intellectual stimulation, right? Like I went to, I went did well at school, went to good college, but like I was an ICU nurse. So you think through like basically what's going on with a patient, like all the time. So I love being home with my children and being there for them, but I also needed that intellectual stimulation and podcasts would give me that. And they like on any topic that you want, like you can anything, right? Like you can learn about money. You can learn about productivity. You can learn. I mean, you can go in the whole spectrum. And so I've always loved them. And then I don't know if this like podcasting class came along and I just felt called. I felt drawn to do it because I don't necessarily want to go back to being a nurse. Like that's not what I feel like is my calling. And I just felt like this is calling me to, to talk and to have these conversations because they really do lift. They can give you so many new ideas. Right. So I started like experimenting with what I was getting in podcasts and I was like, Oh, experimentation is so much fun. Like if we would just experiment and try things out for ourselves. Right. So that's like one of the things that I want to do on raising vibrant kids is help moms see that they can experiment in different ways in their family. You don't have to do everything that your neighbor's doing. You don't have to do everything that the moms around you are doing. Right. Like you can, pick and choose for yourself and for your children. So yeah. Yes. I love that. And the raising vibrant kids, that is just an amazing thing that you are putting out into the world because I think they are the future and it's so important. But what I think happens is when we're raising vibrant kids, we're almost raising vibrant moms. Like we're raising ourselves to be vibrant in order to raise these vibrant kids. So I would love for you to speak on that a little bit about the mom piece of raising vibrant kids. 
Absolutely. Before having kids, I did not realize what a spiritual journey being a mom is, right? Or just being any parent, like for the dads as well. Like it is a real calling and it can be trying at times, right? And so, I mean, you love, like they come out, you just love them with all, like it's the most intense love that you've ever experienced in so many ways. And then you're also like, it brings up everything from your childhood as well. Mm -hmm. So you go back to like experiencing things that you didn't even know that were there basically. And you're like, you're own beliefs come out like that kind of got passed down to you as a child and I think that you tend to do I mean nobody really teaches you how to be a parent and you tend to replicate what your parents did unless you consciously think about it right and you when you start to do some things that maybe your parent like words that they used or ways that like I don't know punishments or something you're like oh I hated it when they would do that right like you're just kind of like I hated that and you're like I don't want to do that like how can I do this differently and I think really getting curious about your own journey as a parent getting curious about how you're raising your children is a really healthy thing to do and I think that every generation goes through it. Like if you think about, like, I know that my parents parented better than their parents, right? It's an honor. Like my parents did a great job, but I still hope that I can parent better than they parented, right? That we can like keep increasing like the awesomeness of our parenting and create even better, a better generation, right? Like, I mean, that is just something to really look forward to. So, yeah. And I think that when you think about it, like you don't realize how much your energy matters in the home as a mom, how much your alignment matters. Like if you're getting really upset and frustrated and angry that that gets passed down to the child, like they can feel that our vibration and where we are in terms of like how we're feeling makes a difference. And I think that it's becoming aware of that. And it's becoming aware of the thoughts that you are putting out in your house as well. And the beliefs that you're putting out in your house. So self-love really kind of starts in the house, right? Like I know you talk a lot about self-love and a lot of us kind of started the unworthy journey that a lot of people in like self-help books, like when you're feeling unworthy, a lot of that started in childhood and from things that were said to us or actions that were taken. And so the spiritual journey that I'm talking about really for parenting is to heal that for yourself. And then as you heal it, you generationally heal it because you're not passing it down to your children anymore. And it's like, if you can do that, you're not only giving yourself an amazing gift, you're also giving them an amazing gift. And so that's kind of what I'm hoping to like lean into and really kind of uncover and unfold in the podcast. And yeah. yeah so I love all that you're saying about the vibration and the frequency that a mother holds so much power like we do we hold so much power with the way that we are believing even about ourselves it just washes up into our children and they sense it and feel it and so i think that is so true and i know that that is so true so for a woman that's wanting to work on those beliefs and lean in to more of that self-love lean into elevating and aligning more what advice or tips would you give that mom yeah and you know i think number one is to be compassionate with yourself. So like when I say that, like what you say matters and where you're vibrating, but like a lot of moms would be like may lean into shame or guilt right now yeah, yeah. and be like, I'm not, I don't do that. Or I'm too angry all the time. And, you know, and I would say this is not to make you feel bad about yourself, yes. right? Like that's the complete opposite of what you and I are trying to accomplish here, right? Like, yes, 100%. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think it's important to know that everybody goes through that. And like, you know, you're not a bad mom. And the fact that you're even listening to this podcast, yeah. you're an amazing, you know, like and that you're even thinking about these ideas is amazing. And you're like one step above, like where you, you know, a lot of people are. So I think just compassion for yourself like when you mess up really kind of loving yourself and hugging that inner child and being like it's okay like everybody messes up and owning it with your kids because i think that when you do that you are also demonstrating to them that everybody messes up and that really it's owning your mistakes and that you can change that and you can shift who you are in the vibration that you're standing in which is so like such an amazing thing to give them right yeah. that that modeling and so in terms of self-love you know i think that a lot of it there's so many different layers to it for women and for moms and some of it can be when we become martyrs that we need to recognize that mm -hmm. and also when we need to create boundaries that we need to recognize that and that we don't have to be everything to everyone 
And also in terms of our own energy, like when we're completely drained, we're not loving ourselves. When we're giving all of ourselves and never getting anything in return in terms of like feeding ourselves. So whether or not you're an introvert and you need that alone time, or you're an extrovert and you need time with friends, or I need to go work out. So it's really, it's identifying what do you need in order to be that energized mama for other people? Because if your cup is empty, you don't have anything to give anybody, yeah. you know? And I love, I've heard it from several different people, the analogy of like the teacup that you pour your own cup and then you give what overflows from that cup first, because then you're pouring from a full cup, right? Versus an empty one. And so, so many times we think that we just have to give and give and give and give, but then you get totally depleted. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I become much more reactive, like and I'm not parenting from a place of alignment. I become not a person that really needs to be around my kids. Like at that point, you know, then I need to say like, mommy needs to go for a walk or mommy needs alone time because it's not fair to step into their space when I'm completely depleted. Right. Yeah. So I think it's also recognizing how are you feeling really being in tune with yourself, you know, and being and being aware enough to say that I can take care of myself first. I need to put my oxygen mask on first, you know, kind of like on the airplane. Yeah. And then I can put my oxygen mask on for my kids. Yeah. So like for me, I know for me, meditation is a must. Like if I don't meditate in the morning, I vibrate at a completely different level you know, during the day. Exercise and moving my body is also extremely important for me. And so those things, I kind of have to figure out how to put in the day. And sometimes I'm not great at doing it, you know, and that's so like, that's when I become compassionate with myself and say, we'll do better tomorrow. Right. Like, so yeah, I don't know. How do you express the self-love? Like, I know you talk about it. What's your favorite self-love tips for moms out there? Well, it started by just me telling myself that I love myself. Just acknowledging mm. that I, I'm valuable. I have value and I get to give the love to myself because for the longest time growing up for me, it was you're selfish when you put yourself first. Mm -hmm. So that was the, this is why I even do this podcast is I heard it so many times that wanting my time, wanting my boundaries, what I wanted was didn't matter. It was you're selfish for wanting that put other people first. And what I've come to learn is what I fill my cup as you're speaking, everybody benefits. Everybody is I'm glowing. I'm happy. Everybody else around me can feel that energy. So they in turn are glowing, they're in turn happy. And so I am so for loving up on yourself as much as you can and all the ways that you're saying, but really just telling yourself until you believe it. It yeah. took a lot of years before I truly believed that I was worthy of my own love. But it starts by just telling yourself that I love you. You're doing great. <laughs> Be your yeah. own cheerleader, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, I just think that you hit on something so important there that the belief that you're worthy and that you're loved is also really what we need to be working on, mm -hmm. right? Because if you don't believe it, then you're not opening to it and you're yeah. not taking action on that, you know? Yeah. And so I realized the other day that self-love really love. So love is one of the highest vibrations that we can resonate in, oh, right? Nice. Love and appreciation are like the two highest, right? And so when you love yourself and you feel that and you embody that, you're vibrating at a love level in your house, right? Like, which is a amazing, unbelievable. And like, you don't have to do that much work if you're vibrating at that level in terms of what you're putting out there, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to offer love, you're going to receive love, you know, it becomes just ease and flow of love, yeah. right? And if so, people believe that it's too easy, they think that it's just it's so easy. You can tell yourself you love each other until, or love yourself, love each other, love yourself until you believe it. And that's going to shift everything in my house. But it's so true. It's so true. Once you start to embody that highest frequency, as you're talking about that magic, literally magic starts to happen, like out in the, in your world. <laughs> it does because, you know, I think that when you start to pay attention to where you are vibe like resonating at, you start to see the difference, right? And yeah. things start to flow a little bit differently. Your thoughts start to shift and you don't have to work as hard at everything. You know, it just kind of starts to flow for mm -hmm. you. So yeah, 100%, yeah, 100%. Yes. And so I'd love to know about thoughts and emotions. Cause you like to talk about the, how the two go together hand in hand. Yeah, I do. So I mean, I've studied it from many different points of views and many different books, but well, I guess one of my favorite 
ones is Abraham Hicks and the law of attraction, right? And so the way that she describes emotions just makes so much sense to me in that it's a guiding system, right? Like if you think about your thoughts, anytime that you start to think about lack, scarcity, disease, like that you're not healthy, that, you know, you start to kind of put out that not loving yourself, you feel bad immediately, you know? And I see it not only in myself, but you can also use this in your parenting and with your children. I mean, you see them go, like when there's a tantrum, it is coming from a thought that they're having mm -hmm. that is not one that's of wholeness or wellness, or, you know, it might be like, she's never going to share that toy with me. So I'm going to throw a tantrum, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily, so that's a, that's their belief, their thought that that child's never going to share the toy with them, right? But it doesn't have to be true, right? So the bad emotion is very much connected to our thoughts. And when you start to see that, you're like, oh, I have all this power. Like mm. I can play with this so much. I don't have to feel bad. Like it's coming from the thought that I'm thinking. I can shift that and create. And I think that I do believe that our thoughts create the world around us. They create form. They create how we act, our behavior, everything. So when you have that power and it's not necessarily, and I say it like that and it sounds like it's really easy. I mean, you can't go from like, totally depressed to completely joyful, right? Like there's this like moving up. She talks about moving up the emotional scale. So like, you know, but you can start to shift out of it and kind of like, and move into a higher thought, right? Into into feeling a little bit better. And it might take you a little while, but you, when you start to see the thoughts and emotions are interconnected and then they also affect your behavior, you realize how powerful you are in your own life and how much more joy you can create in your own life in your relationships, in your own health, in your own house, with your kids, with your, you know, your spouse, whoever's in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's just so interesting to me. And just, I don't know, just, just really like to awaken to it. You're like, wow, I had no idea that was there. Like, <laughs> yes. And as you're saying, it's not simple. It is not, it's a practice. It's something that you have to decide that you're going to go after and you're going to make it a conscious choice day in and day out to catch those thoughts that are making you feel like crap. And I love how you're saying that our emotions are, is our guiding system because it truly is when you're feeling bad, like, like you were saying earlier, get curious. <laughs> Right. Oh, curiosity is so important. It's like one of our most important tools. Cause if you can really get curious and you become open to seeing why whatever is going on is going on. Right. And if you can become open, then you can shift your perspective to something that's different, that is going to serve you a little bit better. And so when you can be like to have curiosity about just life, like why is my child throwing that tantrum? Right. And then you can start to think like, what are they actually thinking? Can I shift their thoughts for them? Can I, you know, like sometimes I'll actually sit there, like if my child's having a hard time and I'll just kind of go through it with them and I'll just start saying like something a little bit better and then something a little bit better. And then eventually we come out of it. Right. Because yeah. that shop, that thought has been shifted into something completely different of like, maybe they will share that toy with me. Maybe I just need to ask you know, like, or maybe they'll share it in 10 minutes and mommy can put the timer on like, you know, like, so it's just such a useful tool, not only in your, your own life, but in your parenting as a tool. And yeah, yeah it's fabulous when you can start to see that. Yeah. I so. love how you're putting it in a parenting role because I, with my son being so little, I haven't got to use all my cool tools that I have for myself on him yet. And I love how you're saying like, you can kind of give them a better feeling thought incrementally yes. to get them to a place where they are feeling like a complete turnaround. Absolutely. So like one of my favorite, so I did this, one of the things that I did when my daughter was younger, she had this binky and she would lose it all the time. And then she'd like, you know, have a fit. And I realized that if you just that, like, so rather than thinking like my binky's lost, I'm never going to find it just calling out to Pinky, where are you? You know, and that we're like playing this and we're looking for it and it changes the vibration of what we're doing. Right. Cause we're just calling to it in a playful way. And so you can totally do that. Or the other day she got mad at me for whatever reason. And, you know, children, sometimes they'll slam the door and go to their room and stuff. And so, but rather than getting into it with her, like I knew that she just needed to feel loved in that mm -hmm. moment 
you know? So instead of getting into it with her, I just played Alana Gentry, Alana Banana, her mm -hmm. new song, I Love You Every Day. So I just listened to I Love You Every Day. So I just played I Love You Every Day outside her door. And she felt the fullness of the love that was there for her. And she unlocked the door and she came out. And I just, you know, I said, I love you. I just want you to know that. Mm -hmm. And it healed it, right? Like it healed it. Yeah. We didn't need to go any further. Like, you know, I mean, I love using songs for that because songs have not only the vibration, but they also have the words and the thought. And so, you know, I'll both talk about, yeah. they have both things. They have both things. They're so amazing songs are. So like one of the things that I talked about was like confidence and you talk about moms, right? Like in terms of like, so our confidence matters, right? Like how we are feeling and how confident we are kind of like radiates out and affects our children as well. So if you're not feeling good about yourself, that affects them and they know that. And so I have this song list that I like to use to kind of build up my own confidence. And <laughs> so, and I did it before I was coaching soccer and I did it before the coaching the girls. And I could see the difference on the mm. field because they could feel it from me and they came in and they played more confidently and they, you know, some of the girls who, who hadn't even played offense, they ended up scoring and they were like, I didn't know I could do that. And I'm like, of course you can do that. You know, <laughs> like, that's great. And so, yeah, I think when you start to play with what are your thoughts, how are you feeling? You can just create like the most amazing life for yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm not saying that it's easy and I'm not saying that I don't have negative moments because I do, no, <laughs> right? Like, but I'm saying that it's there and it's available for you if you want to do it and you want to play with it. <laughs> so let's so. say you do this thought work. So you catch yourself having a negative thought, something that's to the effect, I'm not valuable. I'm not contributing to my family in the way that I want to. And so you find this thought that's obviously making you feel horrible, terrible. So then you decide, I'm gonna shift that thought from I'm not contributing, I'm not valuable to what I, the way I do things is better. Like I'm getting better every day or just any little twig. I'm doing better every day. I'm doing the best I can. How do you make that thought stick? How do you make the thought stick? I've been finding that for myself that when I, I'm feeling super bad about something that sometimes I actually have to walk away from it mm. a little while and I have to go neutral and I have to be like, okay, you know, like, I mean, if it's really, really bothering me, like if it's like, you know, sitting there and I'm only feeling the negative, like, unless I can really switch it to the positive. Yeah. Right. So you can certainly write down affirmations. Like I know a lot of people talk about affirmation work, but I think that only if you can really feel that embodiment of that, mm -hmm. can you do that? You know, cause if you're feeling the other part of the stick, the negative part of it, like, I'm not really like, you know, maybe you're trying to lose weight and all you're focusing on is like, I'm 10 pounds heavier than I want to be, you know, you're not going to lose. Like, it's not going to be easy to lose the weight. So like, you know, move into what makes me feel healthy and good. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, what makes me feel healthy and good dancing makes me feel healthy and good. I'm, you know, and move into something that doesn't have to do directly with something that you're trying to change or improve in your life, but something that makes you feel good, you know, and one of the best ways that I've seen from self-help leaders as well is going into a, pa a time in your past where you fairly felt that emotion. So whether or not it's like appreciation or love, so actually resonating in a higher vibration, you don't even have to fix what you're, if you can go to a time where you really loved yourself or you really felt love. So like, for me, I always think about like, oh, three weeks after my daughter was born. I mean, I was just bawling, crying because she was so beautiful, you know, and you just feel like this absolute love or like you can step into that moment and you truly feel it, right? Like you truly feel that memory, that vibration, and you're sitting in it. And it's, it's actually like coming through your body. You can mm -hmm. feel it like in your, its truest form. And you're sitting in that right there with the thought and the vibration of that. And so then that's where you're resonating at. And you don't have to fix the negative at that point. Like, so go back to a time where you really felt that and write about it, journal about it, like feed off of that, right? So if you can feed off of something where you're feeling really good, then you don't have to be a fixer of the problems. Mm -hmm. The problems will fix themselves, right? So that's kind of what I would say in terms of making, I don't think you have to make it like when you say make it stick, it's like we have a lot of work to do mm -hmm. to like, I don't know, to shift that. And I think that it can be easier than that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So the reason why I said make it stick is because I have 
I had to brainwash myself. So I did it with sticky notes. <laughs> I did it with sticky notes, like my new belief that I'm programming into my mind. I did it with sticky notes. There was a while that I would record my own voice and listen to it while I sleep. Like, I mean, I was like, I am so determined <laughs> to, get these, to get these new thoughts to stick. So I, yeah, so I tried different ways to, I call it brainwash. Okay. Myself. But it so worked, right? Yeah. Did it work? Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's so powerful. Your subconscious mind, as you know, our subconscious mind is the mind that is that small child, the mind that is the program that holds all the things. And so if we could get to it and do a little bit of work, but it's the best work that you'll ever do, in my opinion, it can, you can start to create new beliefs. <laughs> Oh, it's so, it's so amazing. You know, the other thing actually that I would say is to get your body involved. If you can do something, you know, Tony Robbins uses this when he does like UPW. I don't know if you've ever done that, but anyways, he has you jump around and do dance, like do songs basically. So you're feeling, you're t taking the act of joy. So you're dancing around, you've got joy going on. And like, he makes you do it for like so many hours <laughs> straight that by the end of it, you're like, I feel so good because I've been dancing to all these songs for four days straight. <laughs> and then he has you physically like break a board so that you're like, I can do anything, anything, you know, and then, or rock across fire. If you go there, like physically rather than his virtual one, but like, so anytime that you are feeling down to physically embody something that isn't where you're at. So like he says, make a stance or, or like make a, um, I don't know, but he has you like stand like a superhero, yeah. you know, so that you can like look like a superhero, feel like a superhero. So anytime that you embody that in your body, your body feels it and it tricks it. And it like, and then if your body's doing that, it actually becomes a thought within you. And you're like, I must feel good because I'm dancing. <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> like, good. I'm feeling good. <laughs> When I was younger, I remember I was going through some depression and I decided to join a triathlon because I lived in, or like to do a triathlon, like a sprint triathlon. I'd never done one. And just working out is amazing because you create all these endorphins, mm -hmm. you know, and then you, and I was embodying it. I was embodying something different, somebody new that really like. I didn't take any antidepressants totally brought me out of it. Like I was like, why, why would, you know, this is amazing. So yeah. Doing Getting something. your body into it. Yes, absolutely. That part is the, I feel like it's the quickest way to create change. Honestly, is that embodiment piece to get it into your body by yes. moving, like you said, by putting yourself in the time and place where you were in a time where you were feeling those good emotions. I mean, yeah. all of that is such a good practice. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but like I heard you don't like, so if you're lighting a candle to pray or something like that, you're lighting a candle for reverence, you're not doing it for God, for spirit, mm -hmm. for whatever you're doing it for yourself. Okay. So you're doing it because you're creating reverence within yourself in order to embody that and to create that connection. And so whenever we do something to embody it, like that action is really to create that for you. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, I just love that. Like, so light the candle, light a candle for yourself in reference of yourself, yeah. you know, and that extra action, it, it does something. It does. It's the intention piece. It's the intention piece. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love that word. I love intention. <laughs> It's that intention piece. I would love for you to speak more on intentions. Well, I mean, it's really what is behind what we're doing, right? Like what's driving us where, so your intention, I mean, most of us have really good intentions, right? Like if we can kind of connect into them and where we're going with that. So especially for our intentions with our children, right? Like to sit and really think about it. Cause so many of us are in the do, 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 do mo mo like mode, especially if you have children. And to kind of connect back in to what is my intention with this relationship? Because it is, it's a relationship in your life. What is my intention for these 18 years that they're in my house and that I'm going to have them here? And what do I want it to look like? And what yeah. do I want it to feel like? And what kind of energy do I want in my house yeah. to really kind of like sit with that and be curious about it and open it up to like, how, how could I create that? Yeah. You know, how could I, it's really becoming more aware of what you want and how to manifest that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I love the word intention too, because I think our intention precedes our action. So whatever we intend before we go into the action, that is what we're going to get. So if we move into an action and we don't have that intention, that's when the wobbly I think can happen. But mm -hmm. if you go in, like you said, knowing that your intention is to have that unconditional love, your intention is to have a loving home, your intention is to be the best you can be with your child, then you'll naturally start to do things that 
replicate that intention because it's mm. in the back of your mind, even when you don't know it. Well, so back to creating with thoughts, right? Yeah. So if, like if you're, if you're setting the intention, you already have that thought of like, I want, this is what I want. And you're mm -hmm. intentionally putting out that thought and then you're acting on that thought. Yeah. Right. And so, right. I mean, it goes back yeah. to it, but it's like, it's amazing how subtle it is and how, is. Uh, yeah. It is. Yeah. And that's why it's so like, it sounds so easy because once you start this work, it does, it becomes easier and easier to catch yourself in the moments where you're not leading from your intention. You're not leading from a place of love. When you're veer off the path, you get, you're able to get back on it a lot quicker. Cause as you said earlier, nobody is perfect and we don't have to be, we just have to have those intentions to be better than we were, let's say yesterday, an hour ago. And so what do you think about that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think so. That's one of the reasons why I love adding the emotions in is because mm -hmm. you're not consciously thinking of your thoughts all day. And for anybody to actually like sit there and be like, okay, what are my thoughts right now? Where, you know, <laughs> what am I thinking about? What am I doing? How is this going? Like, it's just not very realistic. So I yeah. think it's, I mean, really starting out your day with the intention of dropping in to a really high vibration, which like for me is through meditation. It can be through any modality that you want to, but really setting it at a high tone in the morning is really the best way to kind of set your intention for the day. Right. Yeah. So I love that part of it. And then to be able to be like, okay, well, I'm going to do the best that I can throughout the entire, you know, the entire day. And when I say that, like, I mean, really the thoughts are like, I'm doing great. Like I'm, I'm going to move through in the day with high, high vibration and the thoughts of like, in the moment, like not, I hope, but I am right. Like, cause I am is much more powerful than I hope I can make it through the day. <laughs> like, <laughs> I am going to make it through the day. Like you yes. can see the confidence, like mm -hmm. I am going to make it through the day and I'm going to do an awesome job. And so there's the being in it. And then I would say that the emotions are really just such a valuable tool because when you start to feel something creeping in, you're like, why don't I feel good? Mm -hmm. Then you can be like, oh, wait, something's probably going on in my head. Mm -hmm. And then you can analyze it and be like, why don't, you know, oh, that's why. Cause I'm thinking these old thoughts that are like these thoughts that I've thought for many, many times in the past that have like crept in, you know, and okay, that's why. And then how can I and be compassionate with yourself, know that it's okay, doesn't mean anything's wrong. And then do if I want to feel better, I could change this, like I could move into something different, you know, and so for me, a lot of times I'll put on music, <laughs> but like, you know, or pray or get into or say, I need to go take a break for five minutes, mm -hmm. right? So I knowing don't know what that's... you need. Yeah, knowing what you need and being okay with telling your child that I need mommy needs a break. Yes. I need to walk away. I need to turn on some music. Let's have a dance party. Let's let's do something different. Let's completely change what we're doing right now and put ourselves, as you said, Tony Robbins, he talks about changing your state, changing your energy, changing your life. And yes. so, and I truly believe that. So with that being said, with our thoughts and emotions being so connected, now you've given us tools and practices, how we can better raise our vibrations. What would you say to the mom that is working on herself. So she is helping her child, but she's really working on herself and her, yeah, on herself. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say to her if she is working on herself and she's not seeing these results that we're talking about right now Yeah. and you're telling her to be compassionate, right? What would you say? <laughs> Cause we're going to be compassionate with ourselves because it's a, it's a practice. Yeah. So what would you yeah. say to that mom? <laughs> I would say, congratulations. You are on the best journey of your life. And if you are working on yourself, you are doing an amazing job. Yeah. If you are even thinking about changing something about your thoughts or looking at your emotions, you are doing an incredible job. Yeah. Hug yourself, applaud yourself, give yourself a high five, tell yourself in the mirror that you are amazing. You are loved. I mean, one of the things that I love to say at the end of my podcast is you are a gift to the world. Mm -hmm. Let your light shine bright today. You know, because as you move into really loving yourself again and moving into compassion and empathy for yourself again, you're going to do such an amazing job as a mom. Yeah. You don't even need to worry about it. Like, it's just you, you're already doing the work 
And so, and as you do that, it will radiate, radiate out love and light in your household. It's going to radiate out love and light in the world. I mean, look at you and like you and me in particular, we've started this journey and we like, we're, we're not even, we're, there's no end to it. Right. <laughs> like we're all on this journey. There's no yeah. end to it. None of us like you, like, I mean, I love what Abraham Hicks says. You can't get it wrong. Right. And you're never going to be at the end of it. So like, enjoy the ride, make it fun and like live the best life that you can. I always say like, we are starting a joy revolution, right? Mm -hmm. And you and I, as we've started this journey, we've started these podcasts and we're trying to bring light to the world. And we're trying to uplift people and say, Hey, joy is possible. Did you guys know this? We can make life fun. I I didn't know this. Like, this is amazing. (laughs) Like, you know? Yes. Yes. I think the highest, yeah. Love and joy. Those two go hand in hand, right? Yes, they do. They go hand in hand. Have you know, any appreciation that you can step into any gratitude that you can step into, step into it. Yes. I am loving this conversation so much, Rachel. Thank you so much for your wisdom, for your words of encouragement. Like that is, I think that is the biggest takeaway is to be encouraged that you mom are doing the best that you can. And the fact that you're even here today, listening to this shows that, and I would love to know how our listeners can support you, how they can jump into your world. Yeah. So I have a Facebook group, raising vibrant kids. Anybody's welcome to join it. I'm on Instagram at raising vibrant kids. People are welcome to email me. I love questions, you know, interact with me. You can DM me. <laughs> so uh, it's raising vibrant kids at gmail.com. And, you know, I just wish every mom that's listening to this the best, like, just, I just send you so much love and like so much love and light. And I just, and I want to give you a big warm hug and congrats, like, and blessings on your journey. Yeah. Mm, So good. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Thank you, Josie. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for you bringing love and light and uplifting all of us. Love it. I receive it. Thank you. you so much for listening to the make life fun show i hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little little gems little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart that you are not just listening but you're going to do something about it i want you to be fired up so yes so we come once a week come back listen to us here we are on all podcasts places you listen we are also on youtube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. (laughs) And we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us. Leave us a review because the more you love upon me, other people can find the show and love upon us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.